And if there's a phrase I cannot stand, it's game changer. I hate it. When a company comes out with a watch that I think, holy shit, this is amazing. You can't get a Daytona. So who cares? You can't get one of these either. We want to provide you with a glittering watch box of six watches. Now, I apologise because that's a really fucking boring choice. Well, uh, no, no, I, I've, I've got a backup and it'll be... Um, About fucking time, okay. go! Okay. I've just swished um, it. We've still got gin in here. We haven't changed that. Doesn't matter. It's fine, it's fine. It's, you guys aren't drink, are you drinking? Okay. Getting tanked up, it's okay. I fucking always no, finish no, it. I'm just no, useless. No. Okay. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> just push everything out of the way. I'm Andrew. <laughs> I'm Adrian. I'm George. And it's about time we talked about modern game changers. And if there's a phrase I cannot stand, it's game changer. I hate it. But in the interests of exciting, stimulating, titillating our audience, we want to provide you with a glittering watch box of six watches that you should consider. Aside from the usual suspects, Adrian, aren't you just so tired of the Reverso backstory, the Submariner backstory, the Monaco backstory? If, oh. if, if we're trying to give interesting watches, then, then I have painfully failed at this mission. You have successfully avoided them. <laughs> <laughs> and, I've, I've, and I've just thought of a new one. So it's even worse. George, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I mean, no, we I, live I'm... in a world of like seven tropes that just yep. gets recycled. The moon watch, please. Just yeah, never but, talk yes, to me about the But when watch. you're looking at Game Changer, it, you're totally right. It is that thing of like each watch – you know, has it changed the trajectory of, or the the trajectory? I'm, I'm, yeah. To see dyslexia as hits in sometimes, or or maybe the alcohol, but trajectory. <laughs> we haven't even drunk. We haven't the, mentioned our sponsor. <laughs> no, no, but it is changing the trajectory of the business. Yeah, yes. Tra- making the yes. fortune for the business, making it sexy, cool, and everything else. What and though that's what you're These talking six about. Six watches are unquestionably game changers. I, I, I think I've just added one. Nice as, as, as someone who covers watches, this is the single most exciting thing that I, when a company comes out with a watch that I think, holy shit, this is amazing. That's what makes my job most enjoyable. And yeah. I get so excited that, wow, you, you guys have this done something legitimately brilliant. A game changer. And, yeah, and it literally. takes a couple of years to see yeah. if it if it can sustain. It takes a couple of years to see if other people agree with you. And look, our show about time is purposely built on conflict yeah. and division and splitting and, and disagreeing. This episode is I don't know possi- what I'm doing here. <laughs> Because <laughs> all those words just describe you, George. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looks lovely. He's a fucking prick. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> but I'm I'm feeling more attached to you with each episode, which is like some weird Stockholm syndrome. But no, I you're I really, in the room. I, I expect that there's not going to be much disagreement today, but we'll see. I mean, yeah. we I don't want people to switch well, off. Can we uh, can we have a, a wrist check? Yeah, let's do that. Can I go first because I'm always out of shot, and I think this time I might be. Cl- this is so big. This watch is so big. It's going to make you're the tallest shot. out of all of us, and you never get it. Deep <laughs> I have in tiny, shot. tiny hands. That's I'm like I'm like Trump. Yep. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tip the microphone forward. So I am wearing the. What do you know? It's the George Babb <laughs> Bremont S five. <laughs> Thousand five hundred, <laughs> Cali dull, Cali blue, ceramic bezel, and you just nicked it from the the display next door. So thank, thank you. you so much. You, you Today's might notice sponsors, the wrist Bamford. You, know, <laughs> you might notice this whole podcast is a front for, for Bamford. When are we no. getting paid? No, definitely not. <laughs> Speaking of getting paid. We are sponsored. Let's finish the wrist. Sorry, course. sorry. The wrist check. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, back to me. <laughs> Adrian, so, what are you Andrew, show. <laughs> and I'm wearing this. Insanely good condition vintage Omega Seamaster. Look, look at that is just look at that biscuity patina. Crispy. It's pumpkin-y. It's Love nice. That. It's really nice. Yeah. I I've <laughs> sported something else because you I thought I was going to bring out the Navatimer from Breitling, but no, I've done. So I am not sponsoring myself. I'm opposite. I'm opposite. I'm bringing the Breitling. Oh Come my on, god! Stretch yourself. I've, I've got the wrong wrist. But anyway, this is a surfboard. That's pretty cool. Breitling, uh, and I, I like it on the NATO, and it is just a different watch. It's um, it, it's just 
it's fun. It's square dial. It's uh, sorry, square case. It's something Brightling wouldn't, wouldn't, I don't think, bring out now. But I love it. Or maybe under George Kern, it could. Okay. Um, word from our sponsor. Yes, indeed. We are sponsored by an Australian gin company called Four Pillars. You always get upside down. <laughs> It's this way. <laughs> it's my Trump hands. They've missed the mark again. And they, they do the most marvellous gin. And oh, this yes, one has do. olive leaf and olive oil in it. And it's a savoury gin. So it's healthy, right? Well, let's have a taste. Oh, no, later. No, later, later, later. later, later, later. Come, on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. We haven't got into this podcast yet. So we'll talk <laughs> more about the that the problem. Uh, but thank you, Four Pillars, for taking a punt on three guys. Four Pillars, you rock. Who, Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Four Pillars taking a punt on three guys. I like that pun. So uh, shall we? who's going to kick off? Because what the, okay, the I'm, mission, I, I'm going to I'm going to kick off. George, let me tell you the mission. The mission is just to fill our our, our figurative. Lo- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I fell asleep then. <laughs> um, it's don't don't you get that card? G- give me your fucking boring. That's that's painful when you get that card. <laughs> <laughs> no, it always hurts. It does. <laughs> like calling my mum. About fucking time, okay. go! All right, we're filling a watch box with. Six watches. Let's go one each, uh, cool. and then start. George, right, you start. I'm excited. I'm excited. My problem is that I'm, I'm. Can we move to seven, please? No, please. George, you I, always I've got... do this. In okay. the last episode, it was one, and you had two. Okay, Chronomaster Sport Zenith. Um, this has got a waiting list. This is a cool watch. This for me is. I, I, when it came out, um, you know, everyone can say, hey, this is a copy of this or this is a copy of that. I think Adrian did, actually. Okay, well, Adrian, you <laughs> can F off on that. If, but, if, but, if you think different, then you'll be But blind. the thing is, what I like <laughs> what I like about this watch oh, is... Even the Zenith just website people is would shit. Say what they mean. <laughs> I wish just, what people would just make websites is just... <laughs> Fucking um, worked. So <laughs> honestly, for me, this 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 watch, I freaking love this watch because Zenith you can get the is Daytona. the is, no. Well, firstly, Jesus Christ. Uh, what, <laughs> if, what, if anyone can, if, if we look at if, if we if we look at the oh, the history cool. of uh, of the Daytona. What was the movement? There is the most collectible at the moment, or is is a Zenith Daytona. So yeah, it was the, a twelve-year period. Yeah, twelve-year period. Time. So this is they have the rights, and for me, they have the rights <laughs> for this. George agrees with my video and not yours. That's what so, my video that's, title. That's, that's, screw, that's, that's because I'm independent. <laughs> <laughs> no, ooh, 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 we were ooh. a gang for a few episodes. <laughs> no, I but said do, we wouldn't be conflict in this episode. <laughs> this is getting spicy. So I started with started with what I think, but it has changed the trajectory of Zenith. You and look the, at the trajectory. Agree, of agree, yeah. Their it's new style, their new design, their new yeah. they ethos. Mojo. They really do. You know, there is, and, and it's not only that, like even when they d- did the Defy, you know, there was some things that they've done very, very good, but this one brought it on everyone's spectrum. And also, Jesus Christ, clever boys. You can't get a Daytona. So who cares? You, you can't get one of these either. Well, but the, the, yeah, the thing that yeah. annoys me about this is had it not looked like Daytona, no one would have spoken about it. It, it, and, and, I don't and know because Zenith Zenith is getting hot right now. I'm Zen- like yeah, I yeah, feel why? like I'm going to be dancing and saying Zenith's mm-hmm. good. No, I I think I, it's not only this. I think that what Zenith has done throughout COVID, throughout everything, Julian Roman, all of them were on every platform. They talked about the brand. It has gone into the vintage. The Defy it's- is I'd, I'd I'd say something that I hear more about than this. I I agree. This this could be a future classic as a renegade mm-hmm. to the Goliath that is the Daytona for the, the unsung unsung hero of the Daytona, the Zenith movement. Yeah. That's not the only reason that I think it's legitimate. I think the second thing is, in an earlier episode, I talked about how slight, effeminate, dainty I find mm-hmm. the Daytona. It's very slim. And in some respects, that's a positive. Often we'll say, oh, the case height's slim, that's a positive. For me, the Daytona was too slim. And it, and it wears too slight. And I've just, I've always found that it shrinks because of the, the dial and the tachometer. I find it, it's, it looks even smaller on the mm. wrist. Never one of one. This wears very, very different. It's very high. So it has extra heft. And I find that the tricolor subdials versus the, that off-white dial, it really, to me, it's completely different. I know that from a distance, and look, you said you'd have to be blind not to make the comparison. I do find them really different watches. And certainly they wear completely different. So uh, if I, if George can actually, you know, honestly, I want to bring up the the gold. I, I think the gold you have one, the gold, uh, the gold one. I think is is just it, for me. 
I think the gold rocks. Um, and I, I can't, the, honestly, I can't. So do you take my arguments there, Adrian? You're just nodding and sort of silently looking at me. Uh, uh, Last I'm, time I'm that listening. happened, things I'm got very I'm accepting that, that we see um, <laughs> the, the differences. Um, I, I, Have you worn one? Yeah. I'd, I'd, I want more from a watchmaker as... As accomplished Esteemed. as Zenith. Okay, I have a huge amount of respect for them, uh, as does a whole watch community. Um, I feel like this is jumping on a bandwagon, and they have the right to do so, but that doesn't necessarily make it right. Strong. It's not a strong move from, right. from my eye. Okay, but what I would say to you, Zenith has hit out very quickly when they did the Defy Lab. Uh, and that was amazing with that um, aero aluminium and the things like that. So they've done the extreme love that. weird yeah. ones that yeah. were the such oscillating. a great, yeah. And that is the that's a really cool watch. I mean, really, really cool. This for me is the one where I think. And when you said about this thing of like you know changing or changing the the game of the brand, that for me is the thing that did it. Yeah. The Defy is the one that said, "Hey, we're here, we're back." Sure, this sure, is the sure. one that's saying, we know we're back. This is what we're delivering. We're going to deliver this, 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 this. <laughs> we might make a bit of money in order to make more yeah. amazing adventures. And, and I was just going to say, <laughs> this is the the beautifully commercial piece. Yeah. That the Defy range is the fun, the cool shit. And this is the stuff yeah. that keeps them in business. And have you and seen that Defy Extreme? Jeez. And I, I love the whole Oh, my God. Of, I put one of those on. I, I was over at Zenith recently, and I put that on my wrist. Because I thought, this is going to be a big beast. It's gonna... I put it on, and I was just like, oh, my it's, God. It's this, like a freaking it, bracelet. It just fits it, so it well. Just, and, like and, a, and it just – anyway. But, yeah, we digress. But this is but the one. This, 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 this for changer. me, tick. is the game changer on that point. I, I, I accept that. Tick. Okay. Adrian. Yeah, tick, yeah. Adrian, what, what, what's your game changer? So uh, my, my game changer is uh, – it's and I'm not going to touch a, your iPad. A con it? controversial one, I'd say, because it isn't necessarily from the past 10 years. But hmm. I feel like... Breaking the law. The Vacheron Constantin American 1921 oh, is... Yes. One of the most gorgeous watches I've got hands on with. And Vacheron are jumping up massively in popularity. And in sales, as we saw. And sales are through the roof. Popularity is through the roof. They're, they're getting... Uh, the hype that they are deserved. But this watch, I think, is a game changer because it being a future classic, I think this could be the copied shape in the same way as the reverser, in the same yeah. way that the tank is iconic. I think this is going to be a poster boy, poster girl watch for Vacheron alongside the overseas. The overseas is going to remain... Being a very very hard watch. I'm pleased to get. you brought Vacheron. To us. I, I, I'm obsessed with Vacheron. Oh, I, I can, think that absolute and and on a can NATO I, strap. Yeah. So look, humble Let's, brag um, alert. But I was just in Paris with Vacheron and Christian Hagen. Really? Was I, wearing I wasn't this Vacheron. Watch. But Vacheron, I, I, you didn't invite me to. <laughs> and, and and who brought Adrian, Vacheron? Adrian, to Adrian this? at uh, jarkandback.com. <laughs> that's, that's, that's who you need. To, Vacheron. Um, <laughs> We really do love each other. <laughs> it's all a lie. Um, Christian Hagen was swanning around with two Vacheron watches on. Of course on, he was. He's and this was cool one dude. of them. And it's a black, it's hard to tell from this, but this is a, I think it's a pink gold model with a black NATO strap with gold keepers. So actual nice. gold keepers. What a boss. And he had like a typical kind of khaki jacket on and, a, you know, his, his He's just shirt, sexy. shirt he was is. unbuttoned to his navel. Um, you know, he just. Uh, Do check out of his, his Instagram if, if you follow. Follow at christianhagen.com. I mean, like he is, cool there's just something, dude. you know. And he gave it the massive Christian Hagen hack tick of approval. Yeah. You have cheated entirely though. It was within yeah. the last 10 years. Because but let me say one thing about this and I've taken George's line. Let, let me just say, let me just say that this is a historic collection, which yes. means it's not actually a modern interpretation. Yeah. It's not a collection. It is a very faithful reissue. That's how you've broken the law. Just pointing it out. But I feel what an insanely cool design <laughs> that looks like a modern interpretation of a traditional watch. Yeah. It's yeah. bizarre how brilliant this looks now. 
how this yeah. looks like a modern interpretation. Okay, I've got to tell you a little story. I persuaded a friend to buy one for his wedding day um, oh, and have it on on his wrist for his wedding day. I, you another did your friend, a, a, another friend of mine said, I, "Look, I want something a bit weird. You you understand about weird watches?" And I was like, "Really?" Uh, <laughs> but uh, he said to me, he "said I want something that's a bit different to a Cartier, a bit different to this, a bit different to that." And I said to him, "I said this. I said this yeah. watch. This watch for me is one of those. It's it, and I even like the smaller size as well." well that's said, a big question. What I, size did you get? I, I borrowed the uh, thirty six. Is it 36 or 37? The smaller size is yeah. the one that I borrowed. I thought that was going to be too small. On the wrist, perfect. Doesn't yeah. wear its size at all. And, and that's, that's what I love about this watch. This hmm. was, when it came out, it was like, how can I justify buying it? And I know this is not that podcast, but it is one of those things. I, yeah. I, I, it, I, I can't, it is such a great, and it is a game changer because what it's done is it's, it's given Vacheron a license to say, we can go back to the past and do something cool that people will appreciate. And that's yeah. what I like about the game changer. Vacheron had to come out and, and, you know, it slightly slept for a while and now it's come mm. out and something like this has made, I think made everyone go, Ooh, hello. Yeah. So just one fun fact about this watch is it was designed to be one on the inside of the wrist. So, you so when you're driving, car. and in, in that era in the 30s, the steering wheels were massive because yeah. I did this on the video. I'm like, how did that help to have it angled like that when you're driving? Did more research, realized that they they drove the big steering wheel yeah. cars from, in a different way and the watch would be on the inside. So it was a driver's watch. So from my research, I found that to be bullshit. No, that's true. That, that it was- Look, he's just been to France. I mean, he's been to Paris. And, and drinking the Vacheron juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And I'm just jealous that I wasn't invited to fucking Vacheron. No, there are myths, there are many sorry, myths sorry, and sorry. stories. Journalists, <laughs> hey, you know, someone gets invited to uh, shit, uh, you don't get invited uh, to anything. I'm, I'm a dirty Suddenly YouTuber. Oh no, sorry, well. you're a YouTuber. <laughs> no, oh, no, yeah, the, this is, there's, there's mythologies around these watches. The, the, of course, no, no. And, it's a great and, year and of it's, design. It's an awesome story regardless. And the end product, fucking gorgeous. So that's, that's, yeah. that's my pick. Okay. Andrew, what's, what what's yours? Look, mine is a little obvious, but we do need to, we do need to address the fact that the Octo Finissimo has not just provided Bulgari's male watchmaking category with a big uptick. Mm. It, it's basically legitimized the whole platform. And oh, yes. look, Bulgari's had some good watches over the years. I love the movie Heat, for example. Uh, as a young fella, I noticed Patino's watch and I, I, I saw that it was a Bulgari Bulgari. They've been around a long time. Jared Hunter design, as they will say no, but yes. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that one right now. But the Finissimo, when it was released, it was yeah. the beginning of a string. Well, it was the beginning of a string of world records that showed that this was going to be the platform over year after, just relentlessly, record, record, record. So not only did they come with a design that brought really, because slim watch making until then was a niche thing. Mm -hmm. You had the Alta Plano. It was not something that was more about. Piaget had had their ultra thin and the was, Alta Plano, and but yeah. it was it was about it was Sorry, sort Alta of a Plano, they, without racial profiling. It was definitely a watch that appealed to a uh, a demographic, and it was never really intended to be a sort of old um, white guys a global a, 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 something that resonated globally. Whereas the Finissimo came along, proved that thin watchmaking could oh. be palatable everywhere. But, but the other thing that's happened with this watch, and, and, and I, I totally agree with this watch. So this is not like you and I, um, so Adrian and I kind of arguing about the Chrono Master Sport. This for me has now become an icon. This yes. now, you know instantly, you see on someone's wrist, you can go, boom, I know. Mm. You know, when you watch Spot, you know, you know, okay, that's that, that, and that is amazing. So that's what an icon ten, does. 10 right? years, yeah. 10 years, roughly. Not even 10 for the Finissimo. It okay. 10 so, since the first Octo. Okay. But the first Octo, like that when I interviewed monkey. Fabrizio Buena Master Stagliani about this, I just said openly that the Octo didn't really. I can never say his son. Yeah, say, right. say that again. That's beautiful. I can do it endlessly. Fabrizio Buonamassa Stagliani. Oh, I mean, like, yeah. Jesus Christ. And Fabrizio he is such Buonamassa a cool... Stagliani. Have you ever... Do you watch his Instagram where he's, uh, where he's kind of sketching these watches? And I you're basically... Just like... I watch it every day. I, I mean, like that is one it's of the... It's so soothing. But this watch has become that icon. And... Micro-rotor. Beautiful yeah. movement. 
concepto Clement. movement, but it's a collaboration movement, which is not spoken about very often. But it's it's not just about the movement. It's but, the facets of the case. It's the design of the case, the way that, it, that they've interpreted that uh, Italian style of watchmaking that, that really, like when we're walking around Rome talking about this watch, you're looking at yeah. everything saying, that looks like an Octa Finissimo. That looks like yeah. a Finissimo. And he's like, Andrew, that's just the uh, that's that's the whole idea. I'm not going to do the same thing. No, but also integrated <laughs> bracelet. Um, for me, mm. that's a great thing. That is very much this... And might I say, and this is this is the Nautilus. This is the mm-hmm. uh, engineer. Yep. This is this is saying this is the it's modern version yeah. to set next to these watches. You know, Royal Oak. You could put the, all of them together, and you would think this was done by Terra Yeah, it's you would go boom. This is and 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 it's not. It's mm. done by. But regardless of that, the design is one thing. It's the wearability. It's the way that it's resonated as a whole package. Because again, yeah. who cares if it looks. Looks like a Genta watch. It has Genta DNA. There's a lot of Genta in this watch, and Genta did work with Bulgari. So there's no question. Yeah. He actually. You know, and, but this is a new. This is a new bracelet. This a, is not a. It's a new. It, do, it, it, it just feels like if it was designed today, if Gerald Genta was designing watches today, this would be it. I mean, hmm. Bulgari are so lucky. With Fabrizio. Fabrizio, Massimo. Yeah. Fabrizio. There it's we go. Okay. Gerald. <laughs> I, I think we're, we're all really, Italians are the same. I think we all agree. That yeah. this is, this yeah, that's, that's a watch. So if we look at our, uh, our virtual watch box, what do we have so far? We have the Chronomaster Sport, Adrian's favorite. My favorite. We- <laughs> <laughs> 1921 we have the 1921 which is actually I'm just going to put a cross through that one uh, 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 but it's oh, still fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the driver's watch as Adrian called it the uh, no, no then we have the uh, the finissimo and we're halfway through which means it's time for a drinks break yeah oh yeah let's do it let's Game reward on. ourselves yeah so, so 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 what are we drinking so like we've mentioned in every episode we have so lucky to have a sponsor in Oh, oh, this is left to cook. I know. Just, just here we go. Here we go. Should we? Um, so, go this on. Just pour it in the middle. Um, um, now, do we is, have this a question? Is the olive leaf gin, and this is uh, in the same way that we have a drinking gin from Four Pillars, which Thank is you. the Shiraz, and we have a, a Negroni spice gin. This is a, a savory gin. Wow, I now have several hundred mils of olive <laughs> gin. George, what is Cheers, your? Guys. Do it. I just want to know what your motive is. Why do you want me drunk? Uh, <laughs> you're, I never you're, want you're, you're easy to handle. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Um, now so we got the questions. Four, four pillars. He he is obsessed with watches, like all of us. So mm-hmm. he has created oh, like some that. questions. These are one-word mm. answer questions, as you may know, because you are faithfully listening to our podcast. Yeah. Um, but amazing support. Um, but thank you so much, Four Pillars, for supporting us okay. um, on our first season. <laughs> Okay, what's this question? Oh my god, this is going to be a hard one. They all. Are. Oh my god, that smells delicious. Incredible. It is. It really is. So, Matt is obsessed with Grand Seiko. Good man. Ooh. And he's asked, are they overpriced or underpriced? Just right. I would agree. I think they're currently underpriced. And that's all we can say. That's it. Yep. Perfect. Okay. It's so hard, I, Matt. I, I, the I think one Grand Seiko would be a, a good debate because at Grand that's Seiko another, is, That's yeah. another whole. I, I, I think uh, I Matt's that. given us a whole another season of, of I have caveats for that. I have caveats for that, but that is my cover all. Are we, are we, going, are we going back to Adrian or? Uh, who started? You did. I did. I did. That oh, means oh, yeah. we've got the visual watch box here. We have one, two, three. You're doing for yeah. This is this is something that look. I'm very we. I'm lucky. I I'm lucky to know these guys. They have and I, I'm building it up here. I'm building the whole story okay, up. I'm coming with you. Okay. So, Giles and Nick Bremont. I've got to do the Martin Baker. This for me is one of those watches. Yes, no, look, no, no, the no, S no. S five hundred. This in, but it's not this. No, <laughs> that's an S five hundred. I thought but, you were about to say this, but yeah. but the. The Maybe Martin three. Baker, for me, Bre- Bremont has put what oh, yes. look, we can say George Daniels, we can say um, Roger Smith. They are master watchmakers in the British field. But Bremont, those two guys started at the same time as I started my business. Is that right? And I, God, you are uh, old. 
fuck off. <laughs> um, but the Martin Baker is just one of those things that I, I and also Bremont as a brand, they really are like great thing. And whilst we're trying to find this, I'm gonna, I've got a little little thing from My Giles. My pet hate is watch companies having shit websites. I, I've, got, I've got a little it's... message from Giles, um, uh, Sorry, just Giles. explaining uh, the brand. Um, I'm going to have to cut it short, of course. Brown was an independent uh, watch brand, one of the oh, few yes. that uh, are able to produce cases, movements, full watch assembly in-house, which are all doing in Henley on Thames. I set That's out amazing. with sort of three key pillars, British engineering, as much as we do in the UK, work with other British Should brands. Be four pillars. Aviation military, our background is aviation and about 20% of our, 25% of our business is just making for military around the world. That's Thank you, Giles. That's pretty cool. So isn't that sexy when a brand says that? So yeah. did you know that in World War II, Hamilton stopped producing watches for the public because the American army needed a million watches? That's just badass. So look, when you go to the wing, now this is the great thing, you go to the wing, you Which see- Which is Bremont all... State manufacturer, new yeah. manufacturer. In Henley, and it is one of the coolest spaces. I mean, like, it is cool. Those guys are inspiring. And you see all the military watches that they make, and you go, God, these guys are cool. But the Martin Baker, what was really clever is you only get a Martin Baker with an orange band if you have come out of a, a, a play in, or sorry, you're certified for a Martin Baker. Um, I think it's red. Is it red? Or yeah, orange? I had an orange one and I definitely Okay, so it's red. It's red, yeah, red, red, red barrel. If, if, if yeah. Red, sorry. Ejected, there we go. There then, we go. Then, and so yeah, it seems, I, good, good point. You know, for me, that's the coolest that's thing. That's flex. Is, yeah. Yeah, that's... But what it did was it made everyone go, oh, this is a built tough watch. Why? I, and I went through this whole thing with the S, S500 because I wanted a dive watch. Now, it's going down to 500 meters, but... They test it to 1,200 meters. So this thing goes so much further than any. And that's what the Martin Baker did was it put them mm. on the map and said, these are built tough. Yeah. They have been, and where I look at them is they are a British Omega brand. They, they, and that's what I love about these guys. Two brothers, inspiring, into planes. Into, they're just cool. I mean, these it, guys. Yeah. And there's also, I mean- I don't want to bring the tone down, but there's a tragic side to that. Oh, yeah. The reason for being when you dig into it is, and again, what you said before about Vacheron, it's true. There are mythologies that are false, that are completely false about, and it's very hard to determine whether it's false or not. Mm -hmm. uh, because how do you, you know, you'd need to be a historian to, to fact check a lot of this, but this is a personal story. Yeah. George, what happened? Oh, thank you very much. Um, so, <laughs> their father died uh, in a plane accident. Um, and, uh, you know, the story is, a, I, I can't describe it. It's very, very moving on their story. But what what I think they've done is they've come back round and just rock this. I mean, Andrew, you 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 know the story better. Well, I, I know the story because they've told me it two or three times. But when I look at it, it's just one of those things that these guys... You know, their story about flight and planes and restoring and, you know, they're just... And the other thing is these guys live the bloody life. They're, you know, they've had X amount of crashes. They've done... <laughs> you know, th these guys are they just... Seem, they seem like the most polite sort of gentlemen. <laughs> polite and they're daredevils. actual <laughs> daredevil badasses. And if I can... Because the funny thing was, and it's, it always disturbs me when we all agree so wholeheartedly. It's like, well, no <laughs> yeah, one's going no to listen, no <laughs> listen to this episode. This isn't... It's about time three people got together and hashed this out instead of agreed on everything, which sounds like a lot of other podcasts. But the thing that I love about this, the reason I swung straight into, yes, I agree, is the servicing. Yeah. Do you want to hear what they do when they do a service on this for like a thousand pounds? Go on. If you agree to it, they will replace the bezel and lug arms, which are made of tungsten, incredibly tough, unscratchable anyway. So you'd have to have done a great job to fuck it up. But they will replace that and they will change the color of the barrel if you request that with a service. 
Like, how cool is that? How's That's, that for a little yeah. bit of sprinkling a little bit of sugar on the old painful, <laughs> oh, my service intervals up? The, like, you get you get to re- essentially get a new watch back. So not only is it tough, but you can do an aesthetic change up every service and the price is unexorbitant. And I think there's no focus on yeah. customer care. There's no focus on after after sales service. These guys focus a hell of a oh, lot. Yeah. And I, I have a Martin Baker 3 and I just can't wait to have – messed it up enough to think mm, no, that baby tight. needs to go back to base Change color. and I'm going to be like give me an indigo barrel and give me new <laughs> bezel log yeah. arms and it, you know even if I, I, have, I have not done a good job of scratching mine because it's bloody bulletproof but that's what I love about it there's a focus on what will happen after the purchase yeah. as opposed to the purchase. And it's keeping you there as a customer. You know, they're very, very good. I mean, this is what I learned from doing our, our launch together. They know their customers. They look they after care them. They care. Them. They yeah. love them. And, and this is a complete opposite from what we are talking about in, in a previous episode around Rolex and how you never become part of Rolex. With Bremont, it's the other way around. Yeah, you do not will care be about part you. Of- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they have these awesome uh, monthly adventure... Um, Adventurer talks and so on. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, just down the road yeah. from where we are. Brilliant. And it's it, ideas like that. Yeah, of course, there's an overtone of undertone of need to sell more watches, but there is a genuine interesting thing that they're doing there. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of their customer experience. Oh, I yeah. but, it's but even down to how they've done with the adventurers, you know, NIMS that's mm, there, seven yeah. Peaks. Yeah. you know, he did it's the all authentic. No, the word but, is authentic. But the whole thing about it is NIMS, you know, when you look at it, a lot of brands were like going, no, we're not going to, because you won't do it. And they just went, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll fund this. Don't worry. You know, NIMS, we like you. I remember seeing him at the townhouse that they had. They had the event and Nims was there and I was just sitting chatting. And I've known Giles and Nick for quite a while. And it was just, and I was chatting away to him. And he was just like, oh yeah, I'm going off and doing this. And Bremont was like, yeah, you've got a watch and you're going with the watch and we'll support you. And that's how they are. They're like, hey, you're crazy enough. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in for it's about... Bremont. Um, <laughs> up next is our. No, I think. I think we uh, we clearly don't mind the Bremont. What's your second choice, Adrian? My second choice is uh, not just a game changer for the brand, but I think a game changer for the watch industry. Ooh. And that's the Black Bay Fifty Eight. Now I apologise because that's a really fucking boring choice. You're fucking boring, George. I know. <laughs> but of all watches within the past ten years, Do I you think want to bring it up? The, 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 the Black Bay. Do we need to? <laughs> yeah, everyone think... could just look at their wrists. <laughs> <laughs> or just look at the only watch catalogue. Oh no, no, that comes out a, f- oh, a year later. <laughs> but the, the, the Black Bay Fifty Eight was. Oh God. Um, to our one we, Martian follower who hasn't seen yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, you can oh, get to buy this. Pre- Jesus, what is that? Um, These guys can piss. So this this is oh this is the, the fifty eight. Okay. Sorry, I like Be, the being a smaller of, yeah. diver, a thirty nine millimeter diver. Sorry. It gave <laughs> gotcha. everyone, uh, painfully all micro brands, um, the confidence to go for a smaller diver when pretty much every single other brand was doing larger watches. Forty two, forty three. Exactly, yeah. everyone was going up, and Tudor came in and just said, "No, we're going to go down." Uh, and in house movement, solid case uh, construction. An amazing, probably the best bezel movement, bezel clicking. Uh, the whole thing is a crazy Haptics. package uh, and an amazing price. I think it was two and a half grand, two, 2,800. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I think not only was this a game changer for Tudor, but it was also a game changer for the watch industry because it said we, a big brand can make an affordable watch. Davide. Um, design, you know, designer. Serato, yeah, yeah, Serato, awesome You know, he is he he brought them back out of the. Uh, and and the thing is, you know, everyone talks about designers. Um, and for me, I think he is the designer that a lot of brands don't want to talk about him, but. Uh, he is the guy. He's, he's a bit of a rock star. He is yeah. the rock star. You know, we yeah. talked about Bulgari earlier. Dresses like a rock star. He he's is a just, a, but he's a gentleman as well. And yeah. he's just, he's a real kind of cool thing. And HYT is working for now, I think it is. But he, he did amazing work for Mont Blanc. Oh, and, and amazing. The, I mean, the, the, the stuff that they brought out was just fucking markedly, markedly, yeah. markedly the, yeah. different. Oh, no, no. But that's what I'm saying is mm. he, he resurged without him. Yes, you can say this, but without him, Tudor, I would say, you know, he brought them back out. Mm-hmm. He was the one that said, you know, you, you woke up and said, oh, Tudor, you know, and I think that's yeah. the cool thing is, and, you know, I, 
I, I, I've, of course, find it boring. I do find it boring. <laughs> it is boring. Uh, and, 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 I don't and, think anyone would say and, anything different. But I think that's what I like about it is it is, it's one of it's those. It's just perfect though. And, yeah, it and, is. It and, is just perfect. And that's the thing, the hand, the whole thing that, you know, Tudor is, Tudor for me is more exciting than it's it's older brother 100 percent, and and that's the thing they're doing crazier you know things that i'm like yeah this is a cool brand but when you said that adrian i thought do we even really need to sort of is there an exposition required but then the interesting thing is when you said blackway i was just like oh damn it but then you said 58 i i that's not i wasn't going to choose that i'm saying the black bay i, I original I, oh the original uh, the black bay original so my first Big dance as a as a young. Oh, watch so, journalist. so this is now your second. My second is the Black Bay, which oh, is the V-Day fuck off both of you. I know. You're sorry. So boring. Yeah, but, but you it's know him. what? You nothing could be more boring than yours apart from mine. <laughs> but I want to no. I want to make a point. But the beauty I of brought, what you said is two those. things that I did the, flip it afterwards. But I did buy one of those. There's, uh, everyone bought one of those. Yeah. And I mean, like when it came out, you were just like, I have was to have it. A, you, you had. I, I don't want to throw this Black card down, die. but if there was a card that said you had to be there, this was one. This was my first watch fair, so I'm walking into Basel. Actually, Marcus got footage the year after, and I still have that shock and awe look on my face of, you know, it's only my second year at the big dance, but the first year at the big dance, I go. There's a there's a very dapper gentleman that I meet from Tudor, Davide Serato, who's got a huge yeah. ch- check check suit like he wears incredibly flamboyant beautiful clothes but on this enormous sort of illuminated panel was the most attractive watch at that point i had ever seen the black bay original with the distress strap can you find that because it was but even i like the bracelet because it 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 did the deployment different it did it 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 was just it for me the whole thing was clever um i I think there's a few things that are not clever now but that's me oh the watch is imperfect it it is too big it has slab sides it is unergonomic on the wrist the 58 completely perfected it but we have to go back in time and just picture this this young baby-faced andrew i know that's hard but i'm staring up at this panel i've never seen a (laughs) but i've seen distress jeans i've seen i've seen yeah. but i've never seen that on a watch strap i think that's the first i don't know if it's the first time it's ever been done i don't i had never seen a pre-distressed watch strap so we had that it was just like a warm open fire yeah. we had guilt touches it was a total game changer i've got to stop there because I, when i heard you say that i thought well i'm going to bring in my second choice so the black bay is unquestionably a game changer and then the 58 improved a watch that everyone loved and bought but maybe didn't love when they had it on the wrist because it is very big and Indeed. and there was there were wear issues yeah for me. so i had it i had it for probably Five six minutes. months oh. um and then flipped it on it was one of those things and I, I had the harrods version yeah. of this you see i like the harrods version I, I loved it I, I i thought it was a cool an awesome yeah. green but it is just far too slab sized yeah. for me is there's it was, just no refinement in the wear yeah. because and, and that but you i don't also realize how, how much the bezel see, worked on it the bezel's that, incredible oh, that, it just felt right the mm. ceramic ball bearings are Okay, look, both of you have brought Tudors and you brought basically the same watch. So both of you are fucking boring. Well, I, no, no, uh, I, I've, I've got a backup and it'll be really No, quick. no, I've got a backup because <laughs> hey, no, I- No, no, you can't Screw three. you, I'm bringing three. Well, I'm doing, well, I'm doing okay. three first. No, I'm just going to quickly say that it's, it's a recent, it's a recent choice. Easy, my quick sort of sub- backup game changer. And I'm backing this one in. Because I've seen or I've heard about the sales results, and that, this is a Chopard Alpine Eagle, right? Oh yes. Well, firstly, I love Chopard, and mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. You've done a Chopard. Now, the reason, just quickly, I think it deserves a place at the table, is it is very much a modern interpretation of a model called the Mont Blanc uh, from the 70s and 80s that was wildly popular and is actually still. Yeah. As a sec- as a as a piece on the seconds market, as a as a vintage piece, it's fetching high prices. So this was a, a little bit of a a sleeper vintage piece for Chopard that they revived. They've they've very much in Chopard brand values brought in this loose scent steel, which is extremely yeah. tough and very very bright. So it has quite a halo to it. Practically unscratchable in my time with the watch. Yes, 
it 100% plays into the integrated steel sports watch trend, but it, it's reviving a model that existed. Therefore, it's not totally cynical and opportunistic. And the dial is the feature. This, this what we're calling a, a, an Alpine Eagle Iris design is just it's mind just blowing beautiful. experience, isn't it? But their, their dial manufacturing is amazing. I mean, it's a second to one. And when you work with Chopard and you understand, and you, and you understand, but. You know what was interesting is the Piaget Polo came out. It was a Polo. Yep. Um, and both of them came out roughly the same time. And I think this was the, the success story where I... I, I you cannot and, buy that watch. And, and that's the thing is, no, you can't buy that watch. But also, I can't buy that watch. No. I, can't, I can't request uh, that watch. There's other watches you can buy, but you cannot buy that. The integrated bracelet. I also love the... Th um, uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9 screws in. Um, and I just think yep. it, it is very, very, screws. very, very clever because they've really highlighted the 12, uh, 3, 6, and 9, but they've done it in a really good thing. Also, the off hours, I love where they put that in. Uh, the hands are great. You know, when you look at the design of this watch, it is, it's, it's really clever. <laughs> I love the launch of it as well. Did the you go? No, I just watched it on oh, Instagram. Yeah, the beautiful and, footage of the bird. Yeah, no, but he. Oh, did you mean the Time and Tide video? Because I think we launched it actually. What? Yeah, we, we had the first video. Anyway, that that's no, no. When but, he yeah. had an eagle on his heart. Oh. Yeah, I just went. That's... And then it flew up, and you, the eye integrated with the dial. It was it was beautiful. I, I didn't see that. Too. that. Yeah, so, time and what? No, oh, nothing. Just this Australian thing. You wouldn't know about it. So yeah. my, time my, and my, ocean. My <laughs> Qualm about this. Ooh, I, I think it's most certainly oh, a game good. He's, 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 he's back. Compl he's complained to, to both you and I. <laughs> this is probably our most conflicted uh, episode. I, I, I think this this sits in with the brief of being a game changer for the brand, but I, I don't see this as being as strong a contender as, as all the other all of the others. other watches. The Octo, huge, not just for the brand. But within the, the industry, it kind of stands out. I I love this, and I I think it's cool, and it's have worthy you, to be part had, of it. Have you had? Not on the wrist, no. Okay, put it on we the should, wrist, and and, and, and and you'll feel it, it feels absolutely amazing. I would, I would love I, I to see. I'm, I'm a big Adrian, fan. I'd love of, to of see an Adrian video of this. Uh, yeah, wouldn't you, Marcus? Marcus is probably. I was going to say the biggest Adrian fan here. <laughs> well, at least one of us. Has. <laughs> it, it is true. But wouldn't you love to see Adrian do this? I would love to. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll sort it out. Yeah, show pod. Okay, Shepard, um, uh, phone him. Um, uh, yes. Adrian, uh, how, sorry, I've forgotten your name. What's your name again? Daddy. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. We are in where the house. wallet comes out. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, You're in daddy's house now. We are in your house. That's why I called you daddy. Now, just quickly, we, you are going to pinch a third. I only pinch a third because we jinxed. Yeah, but, yeah no, go, go for it, Josh. Let's do it. Laureate. Oh, Jared it's not Perrigo. 10 years, man. Yeah, but that oh, that resurgence, oh. what it did. I would have chosen that otherwise. Yeah. Okay, no, for me, the Laureato, I you think. You broke the rule and now he's just following um, you. I, I, I could have said something like the casket, but I think Jared Perrigo, Laureato. Also not. It, it is, it, well, no, the casket, the res resurgence, mm -hmm. that's only been a year and a bit. So, mm. okay, okay. Boom, All fuck right. off. All right. Um, can, can I just say, can I use this opportunity? <laughs> Jared Perrigo, I, I really want to buy. Laureato, but I I can't get hold of it. So no, no if, one can. I can't if, even if, get hold of it. If, Sorry, if, fuck's sake. Well, I mean, I I talk, everything. No, I, I I talk to them at the moment, and literally, it is a hard. So for me, the and I'm Laure sorry. The the, the Bamford Laureato is the ghost. Fucking gorgeous. I freaking like, love that. Painfully good looking. <laughs> it's it. When you see a supermodel, you think this. That's where it belongs. Look, that is just. It's awesome. George, Absolutely what was the thinking with that counterweight on the second hand? Because that just does it for me, that little candy stripe. Do you know, for me, this is opposite to me. So this is what I, I so when we went through it, I just went, well, I'm known for black, so why can't we do white? And it was just like, and I, nice. I wanted something that was a summer watch. I wanted something that was so different and to answer. And I love the black and whites and then the zebra. But for me, I'm not bringing this watch. I'm bringing the Laureato because for me, the Laureato has, it's a game changer of a watch. It's, it has, it's changed the fortune. Well, it's made it independent as a business. You know, for me, if I looked at those brands, GP, Gerard Perigo, the Laureato, it, it really has changed that watch and that brand. And so when you talk about game changers, I look at this, look, Someone has brought a bloody vintage Vacheron. I know. I, know. And, and so, I blame you, Adrian. So, so what I'm going to say, he's opened the door for me <laughs> no, to you drop this in. mic. 
Yeah. So but anyway, I, I, that- we have digressed, and I think in some ways. We've sort of got more and more diluted off the main track, I think. But I, I think these are the, the standouts. Um, and and I, I would agree with all of them as being standouts. Uh, but Laureato, if, if we can choose it, that's my, that's my pick. Okay. Yeah, pick. So it's time for the acronym that we always get wrong. B-I-O-Y. Yeah. Bring you, independent. So, so your bring own. your. <laughs> bring your own independent. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Pressure is on you, mate. I want to put it to you then. Who is the biggest game-changing independent of the last 10 years? Baltic. Okay. Baltic have had a lot of love. We can't expand on that, Adrian. I will go with a controversial one of Daniel Wellington. Yeah. The Mm. amount of watch geeks that I've met who have said... I'm ashamed to say, but my first watch was actually a Daniel Wellington. It was that which got them into watches. And it's honestly, go to any red bar, any watch meetup, and there will be... Just put up the original. A a, a painful amount of people um, who who, who got a Daniel Wellington as as their first watch. They're they're cheap. They were um, a huge... Massive success yeah. Yeah. through uh, social media campaigns, and they had a great mythology around the founder. I won't mention what it is, but um, they even had a, like an origin story that circulated that was quite saucy. The, the, the whole thing is fictional, apart from the products, obviously real. Uh, well, as in the origin and, story and, and the profit. It's like oh, literally the they, they were the margin. No, the margin is- so when I took one of these to bits, I was just like, Jesus Christ. What? Ha- yeah, you're right. Danny Wellington is is one of those that you just go, okay, yeah. I I, I still don't understand it. I I don't. They've got a, one of the best marketing campaign. I mean, they they really really leveraged Instagram. But what yeah. they what they did that I I'd give tip my hat to them. They brought in love for watchmaking through the elements of the watch. They introduced. So many people to the concept of a NATO watch. I wanted you to put that NATO annoying on. website. Then remember, the, the NATO was the one that I saw the most. I don't know yeah, about no. you guys. And that that gave people the that was the first concept for most people of a NATO watch. It had minimal design that somehow speaks to the classic era of watchmaking. So it actually has a lot of codes yeah. of watchmaking in there. So that's a great one. My game changer indie is going to blow you both away. Seven oh. Friday. Uh, when it came out, yes. When, when it, it came out, when it came do out, you remember yes. we all yeah. we're tainted by what's happened since. Yeah, and do and the, and, the and watch Anish and those guys You're too talking young, about Adrian. I, I watch Anish young. coming out young. with Seven Friday. I I when it came out that da- design that case. The Dan f- Nieder, I remember yeah. his name. I remember meeting him. He was a rock star. Yeah, for, for I, one year or maybe two or maybe three. I don't know how long it lasted. And look, there's been a spectacular but they, decline. But they were the techno marina of the of the day. Where, back in the day, there was these jellyfish tech, techno marinas, and they were the bomb. The OG. Yeah, yeah. This was. This is the copy. And always, every couple of years, you'll see these brands coming out, and everyone going, "Oh my god, I've got to have it for the summer, or I've got to have it for this, or I've got to have it." It for was that. like a J twelve. Uh, yeah, like, exactly. You know? But. It, when it came out, it was just like, yeah. It was a monster. And to me, and again, this is just in my experience, that was the first breakthrough indie that was at every GTG around the world for sure. at least yeah. a year. Everyone had a Seven Friday. So yeah, that was... And, and it was a, a Silverstone design, um, you know, it was... It Silverstone was, case, yeah. Silverstone case. Yep. Um, or you could have actually probably put it onto the Yale Kucha Atmos um, Mark Newson. Mm. You know, it was a bit of a kind of copy of a few of things like that. But I, I agree with you. Um, I'm I'm sad. I'm sad what's happened to this brand because I, 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 I thought, feel, what were they going to come up with next? I, I, um, I feel and, like this, and on this that is a, note, we're stopping. No. I feel like, <laughs> no, don't stop, Adrian. And, and I feel this is the watch equivalent of Oakley glasses. You know, like the, the really... I, I, I really like these. I, I just feel like the, the time has gone. And like you, you just mentioned, it would be interesting to see them revive themselves because yeah. that could be phenomenal. That They're, would be a comeback of, yeah. par, you know, almost unparalleled. So come on, Dan, do it. We challenge you. Game Boom. Oh, game changes. We're done. 
So we have a watch box in front of you. I'm going to exclude all the extra ones. We have, let's go through it. We have the Bremont Martin Baker. Mm. We have the Black Bay 58 slash Black Bay original. I'm going to mm-hmm. put them together in the same thing. Cool. We have the Octo Finissimo. We have the Zenith Sport. Zenith Chronomaster Sport. Yeah. We have, I'm doing a recap. Are Vacheron. we doing the Vacheron Constantin? Are we doing mm-hmm. the Laureate? Let, let, and then we have a few that are in the questionable box. Well, we can, have the 2021. Can we, can we, we have we, the Laureate and we have the show part. I think they're show probably part. in there. Why don't we let the that, audience that, That's decide. a pretty damn cool watch box. I mean, like, if you had that as a cool. watch box, I mean, like, Jesus Christ, that and is a, And that, that's they've changed the, the shape. The purpose shape. is, like, hey, Andrew, just give me something not the usual suspects. And a lot of these are already sort of modern cliches. They're so oh, out there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's certainly the Black Bay. But look, tell us which of the those last three would make the cut for the sixth <laughs> spot if you want to, because we'd love to know. Thanks for listening to About F*** Time. It's About F*** Time we fucked off. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.